I would like to introduce now uh, our professor, uh, Miguel Angel Martin, who would talk about digitalization, yes, and why digital is becoming a more, let's say, uh, demanded uh, competencies, yes, and why all around digital is becoming so, so relevant today. Thank you very much, Antonio. Hi, everyone here. And we are just going to talk a little bit to see some features about the importance of digitalization and why it is important, not just for us as students, but for us anywhere in any of our, at any part of our lives. Let's start. First of all, what do we understand by digitalization? Digitalization is a technological process. Digital technologies are there. However, we need to make sure, we need to understand that technologies are meaningless as long as we don't apply them within the business framework, within the rest of the features within a company. Let's just have a look at how digitalization is important. Just look at this slide and you will see how important in these dates, 2020, 2030, I mean, in the next, not really next, in this current, currently coming future, data, artificial intelligence, any digital environment is fantastic, is vital for us to use it. So most companies will need to deal with it. Actually, companies need already to become involved in digital transformation, no matter what kind of industry, no matter what they are really doing. Because at the end of the day, many different aspects will have to be digitalized and they will have to be adapted to the new digital environment which is coming, not only for companies, also for most of us. And one of the key concepts, one of the key market and marketing concepts is the long tail concept. Probably you've heard of it. Actually, what's the long tail? The long tail means that although big companies, big retailers normally dealt or focused on those products which mainly are very well sold, before internet, there would be a small or some small areas or some small segments of markets which remained unattended. Why? They were not that, that relevant, that important to those big ones. However, internet led because of reducing the cost of shipping, because of reducing the cost of reaching target markets, etc. Internet allowed many companies just focus on those small niches of market, which are really important for just a small but significant mar a number of people, number of users who might be interested in certain specific products. And those, those products were not available earlier or were really difficult to, to be reached. However, now they can be reached easily through many of the options that internet offers. So at the moment, we can just focus on small segments within the long tail, the small part of a the small part of the line. We're not going to compete with big ones, but we can compete with the small ones and be profitable enough. Digitalization is affecting most areas anywhere. And it's affecting the way companies are building their business models. Probably you've heard of, or you've read a sentence like this, Uber, the world's largest taxi company, owns no vehicles. Facebook, the world's most popular media owner, creates no content. Alibaba, Airbnb, Airbnb, etc., etc. These companies are disrupting the market. 
we might start working for companies like this or even create them. Not everything is ready yet, but we can also help already set up, already established companies become somehow disruptive in this new digital age that is coming. So every company needs to get involved into digital transformation. Not every industry will apply at the same time, but we need to understand that we will need to apply to use digital technology in most areas of most businesses. Let me insist, not every business will work the same. Probably if you want to buy a car, you can't buy that brand new car online, but you can do most of your selection process online. That's an example. However, most of you already know that you can purchase many, many features online, things that were not available at your local places not that long ago. For many companies, the key issue for digital transformation is the place where new business models, new kind of audience or new digital audience, and the new experience from the people working for us will need. Companies will have to change to reshape their models, their business models. People working for us probably will need to learn new skills to learn new things that at the moment are not that important. But they will. And obviously, audience is more and more or more and more requires more careful from companies because they are the ones who decide they are going to buy us or not from us or not. They used to be just the final process. Companies were or had the final voice. At the moment, it's the audience. And we need to talk, to set conversation with that audience. That's vital for all of us. Digital transformation can be shaped into different areas, but let me focus on, the fo on these ones. First of all, we will need to change strategy our company is working with. The digital approach needs a different, a different approach from the traditional one. We can't impose a message anymore. We need to talk. We need to set conversation with users, with customers. We need to understand how those cu customers behave, how those customers act and how they come to the decision to buy from us or from anybody else. That's probably the most important part of our digital transformation, but not the only one. Because in relation with all this, we will need to automate, to make most processes automate so that things, production, shipping is fast, faster and accurate. And we can get in touch with companies, suppliers, e-tailers, retailers, etc. in a very short time. Companies as well will need to reshape the way they are organized. I was told not this long ago by someone at the Ministry of Education here in Spain that six-year-old kids, or se let's say 70% of six-year-old kids starting primary school this year will work or will do jobs that have not yet been created. This will also imply, actually, we are beginning to feel it, that many traditional jobs will be made redundant, will disappear. We need to understand many 
group force labor jobs will disappear, but new ones, technological, digital jobs will have to be created because of the new demand. That means that we are on the verge of a great opportunity. Technology is improving and changing really, really fast. I'm already 54 years old. When I was born, there was no internet. There was just a small TV set and one coasting telephone line. Now, most of you can't live without your smartphone. Well, neither can I actually at the moment. But things in a technological, from a technological point of view, have changed so rapidly, so much, so fast, that we don't even have the time to accept or to comprehend those changes because new ones are already arriving. And the final issue on digital transformation, data. We've all heard about big data. We've all heard about how important data is. But don't forget, data is important as long as we can't analyze it and we can interpret it. Data needs to be used for implementing new strategies for taking companies' decisions. We need to acquire data, but we need to be able to interpret it. That's the most important issue. How can every company start? If we are a brand new company or we are starting up a company, some of you might have been thinking of it. We need to think, first of all, of the customer experience. Let's put customers, let's put people in the center of everything. That's the basic, the most important issue. Then we will need to change, if we are in an already established company, or to identify our company's culture. Company's cultures are changing, needs to change, and to adapt to the new situation. That means our environment will change, the way we think as a company will change, the way people within the company will have to change, because the company itself will have to change. That's the third step, the business model. Companies that keep on saying, we are not going to change because we've been doing this for many years and it has proved to work, probably are the ones that are more likely to disappear. And we are getting to a new sort of organization in which we will use machines instead of people for do repetitive jobs. This doesn't necessarily mean we won't need people. We will need people with different skills from the one that from the ones that have been using so far. Processes will have to be reshaped and redefined. As you can see, this is not an easy process. So companies need new leaders, people who understand what digital transformation mean. And some of you, some of them could be you. Companies as well will need to adapt their logistics, their premises to the new digital trends, to the new digital features that are, are appearing. Sometimes we will need to outsource. Not necessarily will, will we have to have everything in-house, but whatever we will do, we will need to be specialized in whatever we are best at performing. So let's make it shorter. How can we make it happen? Just by living the change and reshaping the company's vision. And we will need to adapt ourselves to 
the new requirements from our audience, from our customers, from our viewers, from the people who's following us. That will require new jobs, new descriptions, new profiles, new positions, probably removing old ones, but it doesn't mean there will be less jobs. There will be different jobs. And we will also need to change the way we operate. Digital operations will take up most of the jobs, most of that of those tasks. At the end of the day, those tasks will have to be defined by people, by people like you. We're approaching 2020, a reference point for digital transformation. There will be around 4 billion connected people, $4 trillion of revenue opportunity all over the world, just on applications, not just smartphones, many, any kind of digital applications. There will be more than 25 million more than 25 billion in bad and intelligent systems, and around 50 trillion gigas of data will be stored. Can you think of that? Just think of these figures. And just understand, things are changing from step-by-step -step economy, from value change, to the new platform economy we are approaching, some living companies are already embracing, and we need to understand, we need to work with, and we need to cover. That's what you will learn here, actually. Basic trends, important trends. Something like 11 years ago, we reached an important peak. In 2008, there were more connected device, devices than people in the world. Next year, there will be around 7.6 billion people and more than 50 billion connected devices. By connected devices, it's not just your laptop or your smartphone. Think how things are interconnected and will be interconnected all the time. We'll see some of those features in, in a few moments. Let's talk about what the Internet of Things is. Probably you've heard of it. The Internet of Things is a series of actions, a series of connected devices those are devices as well, that send information from one to another, from, um, from another to this one, so that we get everything ready in a shorter time. We get all the information, all the needed data in the time we need them. And all these features are created for us to ease the way people live. We are not just talking about Wi-Fi, 4, 5G, smartphones, etc. Obviously, we will use part of this technology, but this technology will be used to improve business processes. And actually, the Internet of Things is focused on four different issues. First of all, people. Because people, any kind of people, will be closely connected. We will be even more connected than we are now. But we will also be connected in different ways. Secondly, data. Data will be important because companies will have to recollect it and will, after gathering that data, will have to interpret to use it so that people will Companies will understand, will work on better issues, better products, more customized products, items for individuals, for people. Don't forget, 
people are in the center of everything. Even although people is are people are just one of the three big circles in this picture, at the end of the day, people need to be in the center of everything. The third big issue is things. Things will be connected. You will understand how your fridge, your refrigerator, will be connected to your supermarket. We'll see it in a few moments. It was, it's going to ease the way your shopping will be made. That means everything will be created around certain processes, new processes that need to be defined, that need to be created and to be developed. Let's just have a quick look at a couple of issues. For example, you've all heard of smart cities. What would happen if you wanted to go to a certain place and you just had to press your final destination and whenever you reach there, a sensor would tell you, okay, in this road over there, just 200, mile, 200 meters away from where you want to go, there is a parking spot, go and park it. How much time will you save? That would be great. Just understand, in somewhere like downtown San Francisco, around 20, 30% of all traffic congestion is caused by people hunting for a parking spot. Even more, while you're doing whatever you're doing and have your park over there, you might have a technician repairing any part of your car that, need, that needs to be repaired. Just because of the sensors, your car, the roads, the technicians will have. We are starting to work enough it already. What about your refrigerator? It's not it's not exactly what your what this slide shows, but this is a very simple example you will understand. Just think if you're about to run out of yogurt. Your yogurt sensors will send some information to your fridge, and your fridge sensors will send some information to your supermarket. So whenever you go to the supermarket, you won't need to pick up the yogurts you're, you're missing. Your yogurts will be waiting for you at your cart, and you will only have to go for them to push your car to your car and go home. Even They can even be delivered. This might sound like science fiction, but we are not that far from that, let me tell you. Or what might happen, for example, when collecting garbage, instead of having trucks going from one garbage can to another, Garbage cans will be smart enough to send information from their sensors to somewhere in the cloud, and the cloud will send information to you to the truck so that the garbage truck says, okay, I need to go there because that garbage can is already full. That very same information is sent to every single stakeholder in this process. Data, we mentioned it before, is power. We all heard about something we are seeing now at the moment, the Cambridge Analytica scandal through Facebook. What did this, did this company do? Actually, they just took information, they just gather infor information from users' actions, from users' profile, actually things that are almost available to anyone. And they use them in order, theoretically, to help a political election. Probably this meant the beginning of the loss of internet virginity. But let's assume data is power. 
that it's power as long as we can gather it, we can interpret it, and then we can work on how that data, how we can improve the information gathered from that data. Think of this by 2020, next year, no longer than next year or almost next year, the value of personalized data will be one trillion euros, almost 8% of the European Union GDP. What do you think of this? Digital is not just transformation, something technological to be applied to companies. It's already been applied to several areas within companies, of course. Digital marketing, online marketing, it meant something like 10 years ago, or a bit more, a big change, in a big disruption in the world of marketing. Digital marketing is the way to promote brands, products, etc., from through electronic media and just changing the way marketing was behaving, was acting up to that moment. What worked some many years ago, it's not working anymore or is lowering its impact. Why? Through the digital marketing experience, people can directly talk to brands. Brands, companies need to talk to people because people are requiring more and more customized products, regular products. But digital marketing is not just social networks, Twitter, Facebook, etc. Digital marketing includes a whole range of actions, activities that need experienced, well-trained people to deal with them. You can see this slide, some of those features. And this is just a small example. Now you can choose whichever you want. You can learn it, then become a specialist. Channels. Digital channels change. Actually, there are three different ways. Paid media, owned media, and earned media. Paid media means that you can offer your products, talk about your brand, talk about your company, buy advertisements. Not in the sense they used to be in the, with the traditional media. But by paying an appearing on search engines, by appearing on digital pages, etc. Owned media. Owned media could be re related to, for example, any kind of subscription. People, users subscribe to your newsletter, to your information, follow you on social networks, etc. Why do we call it owned? Because people just by their own free will decided to follow you, decided to sign up for your newsletter or whatever. They're willing to learn from you. They're willing to know from you. And earned media. Those are the ones you made through different, through different other channels. Okay, that's a very basic information about digital marketing, the digital work, but what can I do in this digital world? Miguel Angel, you told me, you told us that current, many current jobs will disappear. But I also told you some new, some new jobs are showing up, are appearing, are being created, are needed. So the jobs landscape is changing quickly. New jobs, new positions, new definitions will be appearing. So we will need to think of most of them. Data analysts and scientists, 
artificial intelligence and machine learning specialist, general operations manager, digital managers, software application developers, big data specialists, digital transformation specialists, new technology specialists, organizational development specialists, information technology services, many, many different jobs. Just think that a few years ago, not that long ago, there were many jobs that didn't exist. Something like 18 years ago, you couldn't think of a digital marketing specialist or a social media manager, a chief listening offer, officer, sorry, a big data analyst, web analyst, business intelligence manager, consumer experience manager, growth hacking manager, virtual reality architect, visual data scientist, and we can even think of many, many new jobs, many, many different new features. I could give you a list of 100 different jobs that are being created at the moment that are already needed at the moment. And many companies willing to embrace digital transformation can't find the right people. You can be one of them. Think of that. GBSB is offering you a big opportunity for learning, for specializing, not in just one trend, you know, but in the way you need to work in because companies will lead there. So I hope you like it. This is just a brief explanation, a brief theoretical explanation of how things are. But let me tell you, we will learn you we practice a lot at GPSB. I'm looking forward to joining you. Thanks.